Kakadu is split by jagged sandstone escarpments. Yet it has rich wildlife and tropical rainfall. These have supported a vigorous race of indigenous people whose painting tradition stretches back tens of thousands of years. In 1994, the artist Kelvin Smybert sought permission from the Aboriginal people of Kakadu to choose and copy a single panel of rock art for the Indira Gandhi National Centre for the Arts in New Delhi. The Australian Nature Conservation Agency helped in gaining permission. Both the climate and the awesome landscape have inspired some powerful myths and legends. Many dreaming stories date from the so-called Estuarine period, which followed the last ice age. Seafood species are the subjects of many stories. The whole area abounds in powerfully painted single images. Yet what was needed for replication was a large, self-contained and complex panel. The search moved to Nuolangi. Nuolangi rock has a wonderful selection of art, and from all of this was selected the panel called Anbangbang. The survey and photographic data was completed in 1994. The construction did not begin in the studio until a year later. The first step was to recreate the rock itself in greatest realism. Data for the rock contours was transferred onto boards. And the painted images were located at the same time. The whole was then recreated horizontally. First in plaster, then in clay, next a negative mould in polyester resin. from which the final piece was cast in fiberglass. After erecting the rock shape, the detailed work of texturing and painting followed with accuracy of image and colour of great importance. Finally, it was all given a discreet weathering and ageing effect. The South Australian Museum displayed the replica in the city of Adelaide before being packed into a shipping container for shipment to India. A high quality three-dimensional replica can be very close to the original and is by far the best way to bring the full impact of rock art and the ambience of the rock site into the public galleries. Such replicas have educational value and the conservation value by encouraging tourists away from the original site and by recording art which is being destroyed by weathering or by human interference. In 1989, Kelvin Smybert had begun to develop techniques to replicate the ancient engravings in the deep limestone caves of South Australia. 
the method used had to completely avoid contact with the fragile limestone. considered it vital to replicate this cave art so that it could, in effect, be brought out of the dark for the public to see these important archaeological relics, which are otherwise closed off from visitors. This particular replica from a deep cave is not of rock art, but of one of the world's oldest examples of organized mining of flintstones for tool making. It is possibly Paleolithic in age. These recording and construction techniques were later expanded to the copying of the 40,000 year old desert engravings of inland Australia. as well as the ochre paintings from desert shelters. Or larger panels, such as Ang Bang Bang. Thank you. 